Find the best people you want to get close to. Find them. Get close to them. Do whatever it takes to learn everything you can from them. Because when you do, you're going to be a lot better off. I want to see other people win. We're so focused on ourselves in the beginning that we forget about other people. But to build an empire, you can't do it with one person. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. BC here. I still get a question pretty frequently. I think I made a video about it like years ago, probably like four or five years ago. But I wanted to add on to that one and make a new one now about individuals who are thinking about starting real estate part-time or if you're part-time already and you want to eventually go full-time. If you've decided to go part-time permanently, this video probably isn't going to help you, right? And you can click off of it. However, if you're struggling being in between a job and real estate, you're thinking about maybe you can't do full-time because maybe you have kids or responsibilities and making that jump may be too risky, then I wanted to make this video for you to help you with this transition, all right? I do recommend you watch the other video. I'll do my best to find it and link it. However, if you look up full-time, part-time on my channel on the search bar in the video section, you'll be able to pull it up, okay? Five simple steps. Now, I want you to know that this is gonna require, as number one says, a plan, but I wanna circle this. Sacrifice, okay? You will be working your ass off for probably a year or whenever it is that you create this plan to keep you going, okay? Everyone who I've met, and again, I started full-time, so this is more the experiences that I've gotten from probably four or five really successful agents who started part-time, okay? And they all told me these things, so I'm passing it on to you. Create a plan. What is your plan? Do you want to transition in three months, six months, a year? Whatever it is, pick. I recommend you keep it within about a year time frame, maybe 15 months max. Because what I've noticed is people who have done more than that, it's like they get stuck in that in between and they never pull the plug on their other job. There's always going to be some risk involved and you need to understand that. And I, I didn't write that on the board because to me that's an obvious. There's always going to be risk. However, no risk, no reward. You've heard it before. You're always, to a certain extent, even if you strategize, you're going to be rolling the dice and you have to be okay with that, okay? You have to be okay with that. So understand that and then the plan. Three months, six months, a year, get clear on that. Is there a perfect answer for that? Absolutely not. That's where you need to get with yourself and say, where do I want to go? Where do I want to be? And I need to create a plan based on that. You can listen to me and other people. However, you have to plan for you because you know you the best. All right. Hopefully they didn't uh, twist your tongue there. Right. Number two, you're going to need partners. Right. Many of you are going to get listings or opportunities to get listings. You're going to get buyers or people who are interested in looking at homes. Right. You're going to find your clients. And for whatever reason, obviously, you're going to be working your other job. So this to me is probably one of the most important things. You got to find some partners that are going to help you, whether it be your mentor or another friend who's getting in the business with you, or you reach out to people like me and you find other groups, right? Or through your brokerage to connect with people that are actually going to be able to help you. And you come to an agreement with them. Hey, if I get this client and we work it together, you want to split the deal, right? You need one or two people that you can trust that as you're getting your feet wet, not only can they help you, however, at the same time, and more importantly, when you're not available, they can talk to and help your clients because you're working your other job, okay? Obviously, if you're in a situation where it's like you and your girlfriend or you and your spouse or whatever, it makes it easier, especially if they're full-time. However, if you do not have that, what you want to make sure is you have somebody in place, whether it's a good friend of yours, somebody from your brokerage, again, somebody trustworthy who you guys can come to an agreement on terms that, hey, if I have a buyer or a seller and they need uh, you know, something in this time frame when I'm at work, you'll be able to help them. So if you come to an agreement with somebody in writing uh, for you know 25% of the deal, 50% of the deal, whatever it is that you guys deem is fair for the both of you, then you'll be able to move forward with more confidence because that's probably one of the biggest things that I get is people say, well, what am I gonna do when I'm at work? Well, if you find a partner and somebody that can help you, then it's gonna be easier for you, all right? And I don't really see people talking about this and that's why I brought it up early because that's the key. Within your brokerage, with all the stuff on social media, you can find somebody. The game has changed in the sense that you can connect with people worldwide like this, all right? Number three is maximizing your time and activities. If you only have three, four, five, six hours a day to work in real estate and not the eight, 10, 12, 14 that we do as full-time real estate agents, then you need to be extra strategic. You can't be messing around 
watching uh, uh, all these extra videos and trying to come up with all these extra magic bullet strategies to get leads without actually doing work, you're going to have to buckle down and do things like prospecting, right? Door knocking, cold calling, all that stuff, right? DMing all your friends on, on Facebook, calling and texting everybody from your family, sending videos to them. You're gonna have to do a lot of that nitty gritty work and it's even more important for you because you have a limited amount of time. Whereas somebody who works 12 hours, uh, 12 hours a day may be able to slack a little bit, right? Not saying that you should. They can maybe afford that a little bit. You have to be razor fucking sharp, which actually comes as a part of that sacrifice. You need to be on it. So I recommend highest income producing activities, highest priorities. You need to generate leads, follow up and set appointments and go on appointments. That's it. That's it. All the other stuff you can figure out as you go, right? Because uh, plenty of us have given information on you know, your database and, and how to build that and do emails, that stuff you can do in your downtime. But those three, four, five hours that you're on the job, you have to be able to find leads, convert them, or at least put them in a follow-up system so you can eventually get an appointment and then get that listing or work with that buyer, okay? You need to be getting leads and clients, period. So those three or four hours, if you only have that, I recommend you literally just prospect and do lead follow-up and set appointments and that's it. And after a while, you'll build momentum with the consistency. But more so is you have to maximize and squeeze every drop of juice out of that little bit of time that you have. Otherwise, it's gonna be difficult for you to get momentum, all right? Number four is with the finances and your budgeting, right? You need to be very, very smart. If you know that you need X amount of money, let's say you need, I don't know, 10,000 in the bank or 15,000 in the bank for you to pull that plug from your job, have a little bit of savings and move forward with some money, then you know, hey, if I'm gonna be working for 12 months, that means on average I need to put away about $1,000 a month. So maybe you don't close a deal for the first two or three months, but when, that fourth month, when you actually close a deal and you net $10,000, be smart. I would recommend half of that you put away in the bank. The other 20, 30% for taxes and the other two grand, throw it in and live off what you're doing from your other job. You gotta be smart here because you could only pull off you know, two or three sales in a whole year and already have enough money to pull the plug and then really go all in with real estate. But this has to be priority. And a lot of people, um, they, they know that, but there's this like negligent behavior being put towards finances. I don't know why, right? I think it's a scary thing because a lot of people have negative programming or they're afraid to confront their finances because maybe they're not in the best situation monetarily. But that's something that you need to confront now and handle. So many people suffer on every level of life because they don't have their finances in order. And if you're looking to take a leap of faith like this, going from, and some of you I know coming in or considering it, you've had a five, 10, 15, 20 year career somewhere else and you're looking to pull a plug on that, which you deem as like your safety line to get into real estate, which obviously has way more potential, that, that can be a scary thing. But you have to understand this, look, this is something that you need to master. I've been talking about it for a long time. And it's something that is simple. Once you understand it better and you can be responsible, that's the key. Responsible with your money, tracking every penny coming in, every penny going out, limiting those extra expenses that add up every single day, every single week, every single month. And being able to strategize because it's not just about getting momentum from getting sales, it's about having your financial situation in order so when you pull that plug from your, your uh, other job, your main job, you're okay. You, you don't feel like, well, if I pull the plug, I'm gonna drown in two weeks. You should be able to pull the plug and be okay for at least a couple months, at least. Now, is there a set, I'm gonna get the question, is there a set amount of savings? I don't know. I've heard different things from different people. Every person who I talked to who made this successful transition gave me three months, six months, a year of savings. It was all over the place. So I cannot give you, and no one's gonna give you that exact number. But you know, right? If you're already in that first year and you're thinking about going full time and you've closed three or four deals, you know that every three months on average right now, you're getting a deal and you're building momentum. So at that point, if you have at least three, four, five, six months of savings, I would say you're okay. But what you gotta remember is when you pull that plug, the, the, the first thing that's gonna happen is your mind kinda will freak out. But if you have a little bit of money and you've set these habits in place of doing everything right, it's gonna be easier for you to make that transition. And at no point is it gonna be super easy. It's gonna weigh on you emotionally. You're gonna feel pressured. That's normal, right? Pressure creates diamonds, you've heard that, right? It's a, kind of like a cliche saying now, but that's what it is. You're not gonna grow financially, mentally, spiritually, emotionally without pressure. So you have to welcome it and not resist it. And here's the last one. Whatever you planned, you gotta honor it. So if you said you're gonna pull the plug in a year and that year mark is up, I don't care if you feel comfortable or not, pull the plug. 
Now, the only reason you're not going to pull the plug is because you didn't honor your word. Then that's your fault. But at that mo moment forward, if you don't pull the plug and you don't honor your word, you're never going to honor it. And you're going to be like some people. I've met a lot who for the last 10 years, they've been talking about leaving their job and going full-time in real estate. And it's the same vicious cycle over and over and over. And the reality is based on the statistics, unfortunately, eight or nine out of 10 people will not be able to push through with this for whatever reason. So you need to understand that for you to make it, you are going against all the odds. But it requires that you honor these things and actually do them. And when you do, I guarantee you, after that year or six months or whatever you set the plan to be, you're gonna feel confident enough to do it. Even if you're not 100% confident, you'll have enough confidence in yourself in that moment to say, you know what, I've honored my word and I did what I said I was gonna do, I know this is gonna work out. So let's do this thing, okay? I was scared shitless when I got into real estate. Anybody who I know who went part-time to full-time was scared. Anybody who I met who started full-time was scared. You're gonna feel it. But the question is, is are you gonna push through and actually make that decision or are you gonna run away like most people? That's what separates the men from the boys, okay? So with that said, plan and be ready to sacrifice. Number two, find one or two good, good partners to help you while you're making the transition. Number three, maximize your time and activities, highest income producing activities. Number four, be smart with your finances. Map it out. What is it gonna take for you to pull the plug? Know that number exactly. And number five, honor it. Whatever you say you're gonna do, honor it. If you're gonna pull the plug in a year, pull that plug in a year, all right? That's it for this one, guys. Appreciate you watching. Uh, shout out to a couple of, um, of things right now. My podcast, Supreme Being, we have it on all the major podcast platforms, but we also have it here on YouTube as another channel along with the BC Show, right? Which are two growing channels. I recommend you subscribe. Number two, if you are in the real estate world and you're interested in being on my team or at least working with me, go to partnerwithteambc.com. Watch that video. If it makes sense to you, schedule a call with us. And lastly, Modern Success, my coaching, my mentorship, my program, pushing about 300 members now. We're growing every single day. For those of you who may be more on a budget, I recently, if you haven't heard, added a option where you get an access to the vault exclusively with all the recorded lectures with over 250 hours of training, and that is only $47 a month. At the checkout screen, you'll see both options. Choose whichever one is beneficial or what works for you. All right, that's it for this one. Peace, we'll see you on the next video.